going to talk about today, uh, chapter 3, 5, proving lines parallel. Uh, so guess what we're going to be dealing with? Proofs. And uh, just to help you out, I've got a little blues playing in the background. It's Merrick Clapton jazz and blues because uh, I guess we could play the proven lines parallel blues. Uh, nobody likes it very much. In uh, section 3.2, talking about angles and parallel lines, uh, we found out that there are certain theorems and certain postulates. One of those postulates is the corresponding angle postulate, which says that if corresponding angles, two lines cut by a transversal, are equal, then those lines are parallel. Well, there's also a converse CAP, which says, hey, if two lines are cut by a transversal in such a way that their corresponding angles are congruent, then those lines are parallel. So one of them you have over here in 3-2, the corresponding angle postulate says, hey, if we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, their angles are congruent. This one says, wow, we have lines that are cut by a transversal in such a way that their corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So it's a converse. Okay, just what we learned in proofs, converse. Same thing happens with all these other pairs. Alternate exterior angle theorem. There's also a converse alternate exterior angle theorem. This says, while parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. This says there are two lines cut by a transversal such that the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Okay, so it's converse. Same thing. Alternate interior angle theorem, there's a converse to it. We can also say same side exterior angle theorem, there's a converse to it. Same side interior angle theorem, converse to it. And we also know same side to be what? What is it? Consecutive interior. Okay? And just like there is a perpendicular transversal theorem, there is a converse to that. Perpendicular transversal theorem simply says, in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it is perpendicular to both of them. So we have, per we have parallel lines and a line is perpendicular to one of them, it's perpendicular to both of them. Converse of that says, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel. So basically these converses are ways for us to prove that lines are parallel. Okay? They set up the relationships between angles, converse of these relationships so that we can prove that lines are parallel. Okay? So let's look at this and let's get this situation right here, and let's see what we can make of this. In this particular drawing, we have two triangles, a big one and a small one up here, and we have some angles, and then we're given that BG, segment BG, bisects angle ABH. Well, ABH is this angle right here. I'm going to outline it. It's that angle. If this bisects it, that means this angle here, bisect means it cuts it in half, creating two congruent pieces. In this case, two congruent angles. So it means that this angle here is going to be congruent to this one. Well, what's the definition of congruent? Having the same measure. So if this angle is measured at 45, this angle is also measured at 45. Well, AB, line AB forms a straight line. If this is 45 and this is 45, what's this angle here? 45 plus 45 is 90, and that means that this right here has to be a right angle. This has to be 90 degrees. Okay? All right. Now, if line AB and DF are parallel, this corresponding angle would also be 90. But it's not. Why? What is it? What's the relationship between this angle and this angle? 
Vertical angle theorem says they're vertical angles. What do we know about vertical angles, period? They are congruent. They have the same measure. So that has to be 65. So therefore, are these two lines parallel? No, they can't be. Why? Because their corresponding angles are not congruent. Okay? Um, now, let's look at this. This is 45 and this is 65. 45 plus 65 equals what? 0 carry the 1. That's 110. So these two equal 110. What do we know about a triangle? What do we know about the angles of a triangle? We're in 8th grade. The angles of a triangle add up to be 180. Well, if these two are 110, what's this one right there? Well, that's going to be 180 minus 110 equals 70 degrees. So this angle right here is 70 degrees. Okay? Well, what's this angle right here? Vertical angles, that means this angle is 70 degrees. All right? Now, look at this angle and this angle. What's the relationship between these two angles? Cut by a transversal. Alternate interior angles. What do we know about alternate interior angles that are, congr that are congruent? The lines have to be parallel for them to be congruent. What's the relationship between this angle here and this one here? Their corresponding angles. If corresponding angles are congruent, what does it mean about their lines that create them? They have to be parallel. Okay? So what we're ending up doing is we're taking these theorems that prove corresponding angles. This postulate says corresponding angles are congruent. This theorem that says alternate interior angles are congruent. This theorem that says alternate interior angles are congruent. Same side exterior angles are supplementary. Same side interior angles are supplementary and perpendicular transversal. If it's perpendicular to one of the lines, it's perpendicular to both of the parallel lines. This says the lines are parallel, therefore these are the relationships between the angles. This one says, hey, if you've got a congruent relationship between two corresponding angles, those lines are parallel. Same here, same here. If you have a supplementary relationship between same side exterior angles, then they're parallel. If you have a supplementary relationship between same side interior angles, then they're parallel. Okay? If you have a transversal that is perpendicular to two lines, then those lines are parallel. Okay? We just proved this right here. We have alternate interior angles that are congruent. Therefore, those lines have to be parallel. We have corresponding angles that are congruent. Therefore, these two lines have to be parallel. We have two corresponding angles that are not congruent. Therefore, that can't be. Over here, the same thing. Alternate interior angles are not congruent. Those two lines cannot be parallel. Okay? It's an introduction to proven lines parallel. Now let's look at some other exercises and another uh, postulate. Okay, now let's look at uh, another postulate. It's called the parallel postulate. Well, we already have a parallel postulate, don't we? Euclid's parallel postulate. This is a modern interpretation, a modern version of Euclid's parallel postulate. It was put into place, yeah, modern, real modern, in 1795 by John Playfair. Don't know how you get the name Playfair, but you know, can uh, theorize over that. Parallel postulate, modern version of Euclid's parallel postulate. Here's the statement. Conditional statement, if given a line and a point not on that line, then there exists exactly one line through the point that is parallel to the given line. So we have a line, and we have a point that is not on that line. Statement is, there is exactly one line through that point that is parallel to this line. That means it's equal distance. This distance is the same as this distance. Okay? And we would note that they are parallel by drawing this. Okay? On both lines. Okay? Well, this was A and this was B. And this was C. 
see, and this was D. We would say for everywhere, AB equals CD. Wherever we were to put those, if they were perpendicular. Okay? Alright? Okay? Simply meaning, that's basically a modern version of Euclid's parallel postulate. All right, we'll play with that a little bit later on, and we'll play with it later on during the year, too. Now let's do some other uh, summary and problems for proving lines parallel.